Welcome to the MMA Fan Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Stu and Blake. Hello and welcome to the MMA Fan Podcast. I'm Stu Whiffin. Blake Harrison is alongside me always. How are you, sir? Very good, mate. Very good. How are you? Not bad. Not bad. So this is a slightly rearranged episode, isn't it? Yes. So we were expecting to have a chat with someone. We'll name no names. I mean, it'll be very obvious who it is if, if the episode with them comes out <laughs> immediately. <laughs> but it's a very good friend of our show. We love this person a lot. Uh, so, oh my God, I've just had something go off in my ear telling the battery is about 70% in my headphones. No idea why. I'm sure no one else has heard that. And that was incredibly boring and no one needed to know. But what anyway, a it happened. start to an episode. <laughs> So you were supposed to be getting a chat with a well-loved fighter. Instead, you've got me telling you I've got 70% battery. Um, oh, so, Blake's uh, battery yeah. issues. Hashtag do it. Hashtag, uh, hashtag Blake's battery. Um, right. So, yeah, we were supposed to be talking to them. They might turn up. Uh, they're not on the gram at the moment. We've got messages with them previously. They might turn up, uh, in which case this will be a really interesting episode. But we thought, you know what? Just in case they don't turn up, they may be very busy. You don't know what's going on in their lives. Um, yeah. We're going to talk through a couple of random news bits that have happened recently. And maybe this will go out as a separate episode. Or as we said, if this person jumps in, then uh, we'll be having a chat with them as well. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, but there's some some news that's come out in the UFC of late. And we thought it would be fun to talk about some of it. Yeah. I don't know where you want to start, Stu. Do you want me to surprise you? Why not? All right. Here's a surprise for you, mate. According to his social media, Conor McGregor has been asked if he wants to coach the new series of The Ultimate Fighter, which will be coming out. Whether that's true or not, you never know with Conor, yeah. to be honest. He's had he's had his own uh, issues recently, accusations, all alleged. Don't know what's actually going on, but uh, a woman alleged that he, I think, struck her and uh on a on a yacht or a That's boat right. or yeah. something like that and did she say she had to jump overboard to escape or That's something what, like that? That's what I read. Yes. So accusations, no idea whether that is uh I mean the guy true. got run over on Friday. And then he got run over apparently <laughs> a car. Yeah he's been busy isn't he Connor? Yeah um, and then got a so left home from the guy. Right, yeah, and then, so yeah, and now apparently he's been asked to coach tough. So whether it's true or not that he's been asked to coach tough, we're unsure. Mm. Obviously, with regards to the accusations on the yacht, it's very hard for us to comment mm. because you've got the accusations. He has vehemently denied it. Who knows what's really gone on there? And we'll have to just wait and see. There's no video evidence that I've seen, yeah. unlike when we've spoken about the Dana White issue and mm. stuff like that. So he's, yet again, his name is being kind of dragged through the mud, whether that's something of his own doing or whether that is something that isn't it, it, of his it, own it doing. Could, we we don't either. know. He's, we, he's we, a we superstar, don't know. so there's always going to be smoke around him. And it's, you know, some of it's not going to be real, some of it is, and... You'd have to wait and see what what you know what the legalities of it are. Um, I just want to touch on on a comment. Um, so I, I, somebody did comment on the, the the running over of him. So for those that don't know, Connor was out on his push bike and and got knocked off his bike uh, because the sun was either in Connor's eyes or the driver. I think it was eyes. in the driver's eyes apparently, yeah, and, and didn't yeah. didn't see didn't see Connor and knocked him off his bike. Um, to which there's a, a, a bizarre sort of exchange of where this guy is obviously like beside himself and apologizing and and connor's filming this and uh and oh, and, i haven't seen that yeah and connor's going oh, that's okay don't worry don't worry about it don't worry about it like uh like and then the guy's like do you want me to carry your like throw your bike in the car and drop you home and he's like yeah yeah please and then they're filming in the car and he's just sort of saying to this driver like you know oh don't worry about it we're, we're all good and the first comment <laughs> that I read was someone said uh, someone runs you over and you wish them all the best and give them all the love and respect and then somebody disses your whiskey and you punch their face in <laughs> Connor pinned it <laughs> as a tweet he pinned it <laughs> yeah. 
Jeez, I, don't, I, I don't even know how to comment on that. That's, I, mean, I mean, that's the level of madness and hysteria around that guy. And, you yeah. know, with, with, with anyone that is that famous, there's always going to be madness around you, good and bad. In regards to him I, f- I tough, find it strange, just to say, I find it strange that you've just got your phone out and started filming. Like, are there, Is that just when you, get to a, when you get to a stage where your social media is, like, reaching ridiculous levels of popularity... And you can make money off all sorts and everything is content and all that stuff. Do you just get your phone out whenever anything happens to you? Because I'll tell you what, if I got run over, mm. I wouldn't be getting my phone out. To, unless someone was like, I don't know, behaving in an inappropriate way or something. And I felt like I needed it for evidence in court later there, on. I mean, there's always like that, that, isn't Why there? Get, and then, so, because I haven't seen this video. So he talks to the guy, then the guy's really nice about it and, and gives him a lift home. And while they're in the car, he's still filming the guy. Yeah, and, but, and, and it's then just the two of them. his name, and the guy gives his full name, and I was just thinking, oh, dude, I, I don't know if he knew who Connor was. Like, um, be hard not to nowadays. I, I, imagine, I imagine so. Like in Ireland, where is this? Is this is this in America or Ireland? No, in Ireland. And um, oh, they're gonna know who Connor is. You, you'd imagine so, they're wouldn't you? Yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I guess if you've just run someone over and they're quite happily filming a nice conversation with you, you're probably just gonna go, oh, do you know what? I'll deal with this. Like I'll, I'll have that conversation. I have just run this guy over, and and in theory, I guess you could have got got in a bit of trouble for it. But yeah, yeah. but so tra- yeah, but Connor's filming him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That just yeah. seems so strange to me. But then uh, it's not like Connor revolt. You know, he's going to be relying on Instagram revenue to pay the mortgage. It's no, like, that's true. Yeah, he's true. not. He's not like a you know an influencer that's that's their job. It, that just so happens that he's got a ridiculous Instagram following as a byproduct of of, of his job. Um, very very odd. But like you say, the whole Conor McGregor thing is odd and mad and bananas and and it always that's why we're talking about him. You know, he hasn't fought for years, but we're still talking about him. And they want him yeah. to coach tough. Well, well. You, but, well, you, that's you, the thing. If he coaches tough, because you, I, I watch tough, the Ultimate Fighter, more than you. Yeah, I didn't watch the last series, if I'm honest, but I watch it more than you do. Would you be inclined to watch it if Connor was coaching? I'd be lying if I said no. Um, I watched every episode of Tough up until, oh God, I don't know, maybe three years ago. And then, and then I just thought it it lost its way a little bit. And uh, you know, when you look back, I mean, don't get me wrong, that that Connor and uh, Uriah season was absolutely fantastic. You know, it's got the whole he's a snake, and it's got you know the whole Andre Philly thing and Cody, and and it, it you know it was super fun. And but yeah, and then I don't know. I can't even remember the, the seasons after that. But I, I, I used to love it, absolutely love it. But then I yeah. think for me, I loved it so much because you was probably getting a UFC maybe once a month, maybe two yeah. two a month. Whereas now they're so frequent, I feel like I'm getting my hit, and and we do yes. this, and and you know, so there's there's I don't feel like I'm I'm you know chomping at a bit for any, any little bit of. UFC, so I don't know. I mean, if, if Connor coached it, I mean, that's. I'll, I'll be interested to know, that, you know, how many people watch that um, now. If it's as big as it was, because if you can get Connor back, then that shows huge, huge. But okay, so let's say we're both on board for it. We're both going to watch it. I presume you'd watch it if Connor was on. Yeah, I would be like. I think I. Any one of, you know, even minor interest to me as coaches, I'd probably watch it or at least give it the first couple of episodes. Sure. But it is a slightly tired format. Like it's been the same format, that show, for yeah. such a long time now. Yeah. Um, but if Connor was on, yes, I would be more yeah. inclined to watch it. Um, but I suppose that leads me to a second part of the question, which is if Connor's on it, Who's coaching against him, and who who would you like to see coaching against him? I suppose the obvious choices would be Tony Ferguson, yeah, Michael Chandler, mm. 
Maybe Jorge Masvidal. He's busy. And for, I know he's busy, and we'll get onto that in a minute. But I mean, that's coming up quite quick. It could happen after. I don't yeah. know, but you're probably right. He probably is too busy. Um, and then the slight curveball, if you wanted to go down this road, is a Paddy Pimblet. Oh, no, I knew he was going to go there. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so if they're the if they're the potential options for uh, for Connor as his opposing coaches, yeah. Noting that in, in this world, in this kind of slightly fictitious world where we don't know whether this is happening or not, it's not only the series of The Ultimate Fighter you've got to consider and the hopeful, the, the entertainment that, and the banter that you'll get between the coaches, but also the fact that they've got to fight afterwards. Yeah. Who do you want to fight, to well, to fight, but also to be against Connor as a coach on The Ultimate Fighter if it happened? Right, I'll go through them. So Tony Ferguson to start, right? That to yeah. me makes the most sense because I, yeah. it's a, I think you'd probably get a pretty balanced fight at the end of it um, because we've not seen anything from Connor for a long time. What we have seen in in you know the last fights, he wasn't looking like a world beater, and you can say no. the same for Tony Ferguson. Both legends of the sport, uh, both fucking crazy men uh and so i think you get great tv if you put them two against each other tony's i completely agree I, you know i mentioned conor mcgregor's I, I mentioned the word odd and i don't even think conor's odd he's bananas tony ferguson's odd like he's unorthodox strange and and, and i think them two together in, in, in the ultimate fire space would be really good television uh, <laughs> I think it would be mad. <laughs> yeah, My, Michael Chandler. I'm not that fast. Michael Chandler just seems like a pretty straight kind of guy. Like I don't think he's super animated in interviews. I don't think he's he's a bit like Uriah. I think, I think he's a, a quite a yeah. nice guy. And I think he'd be more intense than that. I think he'd be fun, and I think he'd be. I think he's a really good character, Michael Chandler. I think a lot of people like him as yeah. well. My big problem with that is I really don't want to see them fight. No, because, because I, it, I, I can't. I can't see. I think who knows how good Connor will be when he comes back if he comes back. But you, I, I would like to. To I know he's older now, and you can't, you haven't got a huge amount of time to like slow roll him. But I'd give him a bit like what they did when they got in Donald Cerrone to fight him. And then he was supposed to have that season that just didn't pan out because of COVID and all that stuff. I would go down that route. I wouldn't give him like a top five guy in Michael Chandler, who's got knockout power and great wrestling and yeah. stuff like that. So that's, that's where I'm at. I'm at with Chandler. But so how else do you see it? If you had like a Masvidal or a, a pimblet or anything, you throw street Jesus in there and you've got the biggest season of the ultimate fire ever. I, I, I think if you've got Masvidal and Connor in there, like that's crazy. Like because... they they would scrap, wouldn't they? Like yeah, 100%. I can I can see like I can see Tony and Connor it being odd, but yeah. like maybe respectful enough after. Yeah. Well, maybe not respectful. Respectful is probably not the right word. I think they'd be at each other actually. Yeah. But I don't think it would come to blows. No. Um. With Chandler, I think he's too nice. Yeah. I think he'd probably be quite nice to Connor, but also kind of banterful and funny. Yeah. Um. But with with Masvidal, I genuinely can see it. I just don't like give a fuck. Every, every week they're just kicking off, which yeah. would be great TV. Yeah, but I don't think it's uh, it's for the best, especially with Masvidal having legal issues with Colby already because yeah. of, like assault and stuff. So, Absolutely, um, and, and in yeah, regards, I, I don't see that going well. I mean, that would be the dream. I think that would be like just, what just, Masvidal, but like, Masvidal Connor would would be like that. It, I, I can't see it happening because obviously no. we, we're going to get onto what Jorge's doing, and 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 I don't, I I can't see that factoring into the the mix. It will be bananas, and it will be two of the biggest names in the sport, uh, and it will be, I, I think, way bigger. More people obviously know Street Jesus is than than, than know who Tony Ferguson is. Um, you know, he's a, he's a legend, Tony Ferguson, but I am Asphodel. The casuals know him, you know, because he's a dude and he's batshit. And that would be the dream. But, and the last one you mentioned uh, was, was Paddy. Um, 
I don't, I don't see that happening. I don't think Paddy's done enough in the UFC to warrant coaching. Like, no. I, I think there's I enough. agree. I do agree, but God, it'd be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah, of course it will, but I think they'd be respectful to each other. Um, yeah. You know, I think Paddy, I don't want to speak on behalf of Paddy, but I'm sure... Conor McGregor would have been a huge inspiration for him growing up in... in I think in- he said as much. Yeah. I think I think he um, definitely, definitely has been. Yeah. I just think that's actually a really cracking fight yeah. for for both of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I think... It's a change a lot of in people, the card, isn't it? Poten- well, potentially, though, but potentially not. I mean, look, Conor has showed that in his prime, he's a two-weight world champion and one of the best. Like, he's really shown that. Paddy is yet to show that. He's fought guys that he's done well against, even though he's still got clipped, but he's done well against. And then in his last fight with Jared Gordon, there's a lot of people out there that scored that for Gordon. Yeah, didn't they? Yeah, they, they, it's, you know, it, it was not a convincing win. And Gordon is by no means a top 15 guy. So if you get Paddy and Connor in there, I think you could definitely make an argument that Paddy's going to win this and take all that shine and become a superstar and all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. But I think there's equally uh, an argument for going, Paddy's not shown that he's at the level that connor has been at. Connor could win this and then he's got a win back at 155 and then all bets are off. Connor only needs one win and he could literally do anything. Again, it's not a meritocracy. It is a business. He's still the biggest name in the sport. He still draws the biggest pay-per-view numbers. If Connor gets one win, I would not be surprised if the UFC put him in a title shot because that's just business. It's not a meritocracy. We've said it a million times on this show. Benil Dariush, in my opinion, should be fighting for the belt, but he goes on the mic and says he'll fight 10 guys and all this And he's just not, he's not going to draw numbers. If you book Benil Dariush versus Islam Makachev or whoever else, it's, it's it do fine but it's not going to do great numbers. You book Conor McGregor against a broomstick, it will probably quadruple those numbers. So that's it's just business. It's, it's not a meritocracy. It's just business. But yeah, I, I, I would like to see Tony Ferguson because I think that's the best fight for Conor on the way back. Because if Conor loses yeah. that, Tony's on like a five-fight skid or something like yeah. that now. But granted, it's all against top guys, yeah. but still... Huge. If Connor loses to Ferguson, it's done. If Connor wins, then again, he's, he's you, yeah. he could fight anyone, anyone after that point. He could go and it, it would not surprise me if they went, oh, Connor's just beat Tony Ferguson. Maybe because Connor's looking so big, they even do it at welterweight, so he's not got a cut weight. And even one win, even at welterweight, the UFC could make him fight. I'd say to him, you can fight for a belt of one fifty-five. Or if Leon beats Usman. He might go, well, Leon's more of a striker. I know he can grapple really well. Maybe I'll take on Leon. UK versus Ireland, huge fight. Leon's not going to say no. It's going to be a huge payday for him. So he could go up and go, well, I, I, I've not got long left. I want to chase history. I'll be, I think he'd be the first ever three-weight world champion if he were to win that. I mean, yeah. I think the betting favourite by a country mile would be Leon Edwards. But these things could happen. And again, I'm sure Leon would love to beat Usman and then fight Connor in a title defense. He'd make so much money. Absolutely. And and, and if and if Tony fights him, it's uh, it's a wonderful and, and loses, um, then I guess that's a lovely little retirement fund, isn't it? hundred percent. I think Tony's one of those guys that we all loved him. He was on that amazing 12 fight or something, win streak. The fight with Khabib never materialized and we were all desperate and desperate for it. And it was like three or four times that that thing was just like cursed, didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, and Tony now he's on this horrible skid and he, you know, he's not looking the same. It'd be lovely to see him get a big payday on his way out. So, you know, you also wonder with some of the other stuff that's gone on in his personal life, yeah. Has has the beatings he's taken had an effect on him and all that? And you know, you want to make sure that he gets the right health care, all that stuff, and saying goodbye to Tony when he's on the biggest payday of his career. I, I'd feel good about that. I, yeah. I I I you know, I'd like to see Tony sail off with a big bag of money. Well, we we spoke a lot about people in maybe like the the sort of entering into the twilight years of their career. Um, let's talk about people that are literally on fire and there is going to be some serious fire at UFC 287. Um, we've had some big announcements since we last recorded. Uh, none more so 
than the rematch between Pereira and Izzy. I mean, that's good yes. news, right? Yes, I believe it's booked for early April, uh, UFC 287. Um, I think it's in Miami. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think it's in Miami. Um, and uh, yeah, Adesanya Pereira, I kind of thought maybe Izzy would want a bit more time because I kind of thought he'd maybe work on his grappling a bit more, try and implement that kind of game plan. Oh, it's a trick. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of expected more time. I mean, what does he do if he loses? Uh, no idea. I mean, when you go back to our predictions for the year, I think I said, I don't see Izzy getting that fight. I think he's going to take some time. I think he mentioned injury yeah. uh, after the fight. Um, well, you went fucking mental, didn't you? You started saying Robert Whittaker's going to beat Pereira and then they're going to do Adesanya Whittaker and Whittaker's finally going to beat Adesanya. Whittaker's finishing the year, champ. Fucking hell. <laughs> well, to be fair... I mean, there's definitely more chance. I thought Pereira would maybe only defend the title once this year. Yeah. I thought he'd probably make Adesanya in June, July. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking I'd lean Pereira in that rematch. I mean, I still think Adesanya can do it. And part of me would like to see him do mm. it. Um, but I just think the size, man, he's so fucking big. Pereira's an absolute monster. But because the fight is taking place in April, it makes me think there certainly could be another title defense before the end of the year. Yeah. I just don't think Pereira's got long for the middleweight division. I saw him looking at Jamal Hill, who we'll get onto in a minute as well. And I think that he fancies, I think that. He fancies moving up in weight. And I don't blame him. That cut must be terrible. But if he goes up, does he instantly get the title shot or does he have to fight an Ankalaev or somebody nah. that would be nah. problematic to him? If you're the champ, I pretty much think you'll always fight for the belt straight away just because it looks two good on the posters, exciting, doesn't, it? doesn't it? Yeah, of course. Two, two guys with belts over their shoulders. It just it builds the card up more. It makes it more of an event. I, I Yeah, I, I think it's just so mad that like a year and a bit ago, we didn't even know who Alex Pereira was. Mate. Someone would have said Alex Pereira and we'd have been, who? The what yeah. now? What it's just signed for the UFC? He fought some guy that's unranked that you know he beat. Like, who cares? Um, and then like a year later, he's the frigging champ. It's madness. And you, you it, you've got to wonder, like, where is his head's at? Because he must be thinking this guy's my fucking kryptonite. Oh. I, I can't, I can't fucking beat him. I watched the fight again uh, last week, and he's doing really well. And it's just Dude, so he's winning the fight. Yeah. Until the last round, he's and winning like, it. And I mean, you know, we see a lot of that last year. And and oh my god, and you just think he must have just got back in that dressing room and just thought, fuck, like what, what, I can't beat him. Yeah. Like, and you just wonder like how that kind of thing takes its toll on on you mentally when what's that third loss to him? You know, I I know not in 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 the in the octagon, yeah. Um, but in you know in, in combat sports and fucking hell, he must just think, what have I got to do? Because I put it on him, and you know, and was looking great. And 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 am I right in saying he, he did he, he didn't drop him, but he wobbled him, didn't he? In the what? Um, at the end of the first round, right at the end round, of the first round, right, oh, first, first second, on right at the end. And if that like, if that weren't the end of the round, yeah. he would have finished that fight. Yeah, but the same goes in their second kickboxing match in like yeah. round two in their second kickboxing match. He had him wobbled. The ref gave him a standing eight yeah. count. Adesanya's there, like ready to go, and then all of a sudden, just yeah. in the third round, that huge left hook came in. Yeah. Oh, it, you're right. It's just because <laughs> one did. thing I would say is that for his mentality, surely it's like you can just latch onto the fact that like, hey, if there was a few more seconds left in that first round in in the the MMA fight, you'd have beat him. Yeah. In the kickboxing fight, you. You'd have beat him if there was, you know, a bit more time left or the ref didn't give him a standing eight count. Or any of those things. He's got the ability to hurt Pereira, 100%. But it's just Pereira's got more ability, I think. Is, is it, but is it that, is that kind of mindset over, you know, overridden by it just takes one shot from this guy and he's going to hurt me? Because mm. the whole fight, as much as Izzy was looking great, every time. Pereira caught him, it was like, oh, fucking hell, that geezer hits like it a fucking so, truck. It was so nerve-wracking. It'd be so interesting watching this second fight because it was just so nerve-wracking. 
Adesanya would do well and move and escape, but then do well and then move and escape. But the whole fight, even though you knew Adesanya was winning, the whole fight, any time Adesanya's back foot hit the cage, you're like, oh no, he's got you cornered. Yeah, He's just so big and powerful. You're just like, this could be game over at, at any point. He could land yeah. that one strike. And I just think power is just such... Uh, it's, it's, like a, it's, it's like a superpower. Yeah. It's like... He's got that ability to just knock you out and he can yeah. do it. He's got obviously great technique, but that power, I think Adesanya is probably technically a much better striker. Oh yeah, 100%. But, but Pereira's, but that's not to say that Pereira, Pereira is very technical. He's probably the second best striker in, in the middleweight division. Well, he is, he must be. Um, but I'm just not trying to take away anything from Pereira. But it's just, that, that, but what I'm saying is if Adesanya is there and Pereira is there, then that power just boosts him up to mm -hmm. a level just maybe slightly above Adesanya because yeah. Adesanya's got to clip him really perfectly, whereas Pereira's maybe just got to get one or two little glancing shots yeah. or something like that, and it's just game over. I mean, yeah. The other fight on that card, though, the co-main event, we see the return of Jorge Masvidal mm. against Gilbert Burns. What do you think? I'm really glad Gilbert's in there quick after his mm -hmm. fight with Neil Magny because he didn't take any punishment. This is exactly yeah. what he should be doing. And he's been calling for a big fight like against Masvidal for a while. Yeah. I'm not looking at the rankings at the moment, but I'm assuming that Masvidal's quite ranked a, a fair amount behind Gilbert Burns. What do you, how do you feel about that fight? What's, what's uh, your impression uh, of it? Are you excited about it? Uh, I, I, I think, I think he's a, a comfortable win for Gilbert. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Gilbert's uh, just a better all-round fighter. Uh, yep. I think I'd much rather see Jorge in more kind of um, classic fights or whatever you want to call it. You know, your kind of super fights with your, your people that aren't necessarily going to win belts. But, yep. you know, like we've mentioned, Connor and, 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 you know, all of those people that are on the sort of fringes of it that are superstars but are probably just not going to get that strap um yep. I, I think there's more interesting fights out there uh for masvidal um i think you know gilbert's trying to still sort of put himself in the mix for that that strap um yep. it's a big payday for gilbert i'm sure probably the maybe the best payday of his career maybe i don't know like, i don't know if i agree with that because okay. I don't, because he's not a champion, so he's not going to be getting pay per view points. So True. I think it's probably, hey Gilbert, you're on, I don't know, a hundred grand show, a hundred yeah. grand win, or something like that. I don't know. Um, uh, do you want to fight Masvidal? And he'll just go, yes, please. Yeah. Masvidal, on the other hand, is probably someone with that star power that can go. I'll do it if I get a percentage of this, or I'll do it if you give me a new contract with a better yeah. deal, or. Stuff like that potentially could happen with Masvidal. I, I reckon Masvidal's on stupid money, really, given yeah. that he's not going to win a belt and all that kind of stuff. So, and I, I, yeah. he's not going to beat Gilbert Burns. Like, I, 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 I can't I, see it. No. I don't know what he's got to do to to beat Gilbert Burns. Uh, you know, them them highlights of your your Darren Tills and your uh, your Ben Askrens. They're a long time ago now, and and I think Gilbert Burns is in good shape at the moment. And and I think he's got that skill set that Masvidal will struggle with. Yeah. Great jiu-jitsu can take you down as well. Yeah. You know, like you've got a lot of these jiu-jitsu guys yeah. we mentioned before that just don't do very well on the takedowns. Is he a Kamaru Usman or a Colby Covington when it comes to takedowns? No. But we saw what he did to Wonderboy. Yeah. And I, I, I can see... I can see Masvidal struggling to keep this on the feet. Gilbert, if he's smart, is just going to take it to the ground. But yeah. Gilbert can throw hands as well. I don't think he's technically as good as Masvidal, but I think he he can really match him in the power, yeah. if not maybe even surpass him. I don't know. So, yeah, I, I would say Gilbert, for me, is... is it's, a fun fight. This fight. it's a fun, fun fight. fight. It's a fun fight. Jorge always it's... brings brings the, the yeah. attention and and, yeah. and the, the excitement just because he's bananas. And... And, and if yeah. it is in Miami, he'll have that home crowd backing him as well. Yeah. And, and that'll be really fun for, for him. Maybe it'll be one of his last fights if he's fighting in, in Miami. I know that he's doing well. He's got like loads of other fight promotions or something that he does. He does his own, I can't remember what it's called now, Icon? Icon fight right. promotion? Maybe I'm wrong. But he's got his own fight promotion. He does his other thing. He's got his um like tequila or something. Like He does all right, Masvidal. I think he's he's doing all right. So maybe he doesn't need to fight quite so much. Um, Another fight that has been added to that, um, is 
one of Gilbert's training partners and uh, two-time former guest of the show, Ian Gary. Um, and that's Ian Gary's on that card. I did see a little Instagram post. It, it, at first, there was no like um, opponent announcement, but I see a, a, a post from Ian Gary. He looked like he was getting a tattoo done at the time, uh, saying that they have given him his opponent. Um, he didn't know who he was. Um, I think it might be his UFC debut. Don't quote me on that. Right. But said he'd had... 16 wins or something like that in, in another organization uh, in mixed martial arts and yeah and but yeah it'd be great to see Ian Gary back in in the octagon I think uh, yep. like he, he for some reason he's not got he's he's got a bit of star quality about him in game make no mistake and 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 but I think it's it's really interesting seeing him like you know coming through from cage warriors the same way that Paddy has you know Paddy's trajectory has been stupid and he's become yeah. like so famous so quickly and you know fighting in you know on, on these UK cards and and I think it's very interesting how Ian Gary's took a very different approach he's gone out to America to training in America living in America and 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 has, has kind of been fighting on the, the the American cards I mean I think it would have been great to have seen him in London in March but that's not on the that's not on the agenda and so I'm just very interested to see what they're doing with with Ian Gary because he's striking. I think he's, he's, he's the precision in his striking is phenomenal, um, and yeah, and he's got undoubtedly like big star quality. But I think when you have got two guys from the from the UK from Great Britain come, coming through, it just seems that all eyes are on Paddy at the moment, and and it's you know I don't want that to take anything away from Ian Gary because I think Ian Gary's got a big big future ahead of him. Yeah, I, I mean, I, yeah, they're taking very different approaches. Obviously, Ian Gary didn't have the performances that um, that Paddy had in terms of just like knocking everyone out and getting clipped in these crazy, exciting fights. But is Ian Gary got more of a long term uh, kind of uh, game plan there in terms of you know don't get hit if you just get just get wins. Just yeah. get wins and evolve. You're, you're. He's over it. Is it AT? No, uh, Sanford, Sanford yeah. MMA, which becomes something else, I think. Um, and he's there training with the likes of Gilbert Burns, as you said, Michael Chandler every now and again. I think Usman was in one day uh, doing some work with him and stuff. Like he's there with the best of the mate. best. I think Derek Brunson might be there. I mean, he's learning from it. So just get wins, mate. Just yeah. get wins. Take as little damage as possible and creep your way up. If you really believe you can become the best, he's only in his like, mid-20s. Like, yeah. is he 24, 25, something like yeah. that? I don't know. Um, he's just had a baby as well. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a big change, a big stuff going on in your life. So, yeah, for sure. Just I, 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 I think the ceiling could be very high for Ian, but he's not been tested um, to a huge degree yet. Um and I think I, I don't know who this new guy is. And with with, with um, guys coming in to make their UFC debuts, a lot of the time the UFC debut is a big thing and it can make a big difference to people mentally and, and people find it difficult to get past that. But equally, you can get some undefeated fighters or whatever in these uh, smaller organizations that come over and you don't quite know enough about them. They've not been on the top scene. It's like There's some video footage, all that stuff, but they've just got, something that you're not ready for and and you always got to be careful i mean i'll always back ian uh i'm a big fan of, of ian's but just because someone is making their ufc debut or you've not heard their name before you can't write them off you need to be on point and i'm sure he will be i think ian seems sensible with that kind of stuff and i'm sure he will be on point and and ian gary on point as you say striking's really good we saw in his fight against jack grant that you know his defensive grappling was very good as well really good so uh yeah and he can only but again talking about grapplers chandler gilbert burns Derek brunson he can only have improved exponentially in, if you're in rolling areas. around with them you, yes, oh, good you, stock, and it. Your 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 just the experience yeah. you're going to get from that is 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 brilliant. So that yeah. ain't bad. And and the other thing on that card as well for the hardcores, Font versus Yanez is a fight I cannot wait for. That'll be incredible. Um, we, 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 on that, like we we talk about Masvidal, like you know, always brings fireworks. Rob fucking Font always brings fireworks. That guy's boxing's fucking ludicrous. As does Adrian Yanez. I'm gonna mm. I'm gonna. 
say now, I think I'm going to go for Yanez. Oh, hello. Yeah, I like a bit of Yanez. I think he's great. I'm a really big fan of Yanez. Um, but yeah, so one of the other things to, to quickly talk about um, is do since the, what was it, UFC 283 yep. was Jamal yep. Hill, uh, mm-hmm. Globe Sierra. Since that fight, there's been a lot of talk about whether Jamal Hill has been disrespected in terms of he's won the belt, he's the champ now, but a lot of people are still saying, well, yeah, but Yuri will beat him, or yeah, he, he's the champ, but if he was to fight Magomed, he'd get beat. Even people have said Vadim Nemkov over in Bellator, he could beat him. Like, there's a lot of people talking about that, and Jamal himself was on Ariel Hawani a little while ago. And he was saying uh, kind of thing to a, to a similar extent, kind of saying that he doesn't feel like he's been given the respect that he deserves after a performance like that. Do you agree with that? Do you feel like maybe there's be people haven't given Jamal the shine he deserves, or do you think it's kind of fair? Because when we, if we're all brutally honest, Jamal was supposed to fight Anthony Smith uh Geary got injured then there's Glover then Yarn fights Ankalaya for the vacant belt that's a draw and then uh they they then go to Jamal so he was like like I don't know like fourth fifth whatever it would be in the pecking order you got Geary Glover Magomed Yarn then Jamal yeah so even the UFC in you could say have gone your your fifth choice do, do you feel like Jamal's been disrespected a little bit? Have you seen any of that kind of conversation going on on social media or or anything like that? Um, I, I haven't, uh, in all honesty. And maybe it was Brazilians that that, that were, were throwing that because obviously he, he beat he beat their hero, uh, he beat Glover. I I think fair play to Jamal Hill. Like he he. Got, he's beaten everyone they put in front of him. Obviously, apart from Paul Craig, but you know uh, that that fight aside, like all he's done, he's been. He, from what I gather, he doesn't strike me as somebody that swerves fights. I think you know he sounds like if someone offers him a fight, he takes it. And he he got given that opportunity, and he done a number on Glover, like absolutely dominated him, absolutely like beat him up, and. He's the champ, and he's the champ through saying yes to fights and winning them convincingly. He's got one loss on his record. Am I right in saying that he's only got the Paul Craig loss? Uh, hasn't he? I'd have to, I'd have to pull up the record, but you, you might be right. Yeah, I, I, I think he has, uh, and and I think, mate, give the guy his respect because what, what what's he meant to do? What, what what else can he do? Someone offers you the shot at the belt, and you go in there and you put on the performance of your life. And you absolutely destroy a legend, and you get that belt. What what's not to respect about that? Um, you you can look at um, Blahovich and Ankalaev and go, okay, were they ranked above him when they fought? Um, but that fight was a very uninteresting fight. I, I I disagree with the way that the UFC worked it. The fact that they thought it was a boring fight, and within before they'd even announced the winner, Jamal Hill was getting a phone call. And uh, like, I, I think that was all a little bit weird. But none of it's Jamal Hill's fault. He's beaten everybody mm. in front of him. And you can't do any more than that. And he happens to have the belt around his waist through that fucking amazing performance. So, yeah, I, I don't know why anyone would question it. Yes, there's other fights out there. But he'll probably end up having to have them fights. So, mm-hmm. What's he well, done wrong? No, no, I don't think anyone said he's done anything wrong. I think he said that he feels disrespected. I think other people have kind of maybe suggested it's a bit of a paper championship and suggested that, you know, the light heavyweight division's in such a state that a guy that was ranked seventh is now the champ when there's plenty of people that would beat him. I, I think there's that is kind of harsh. I think Jamal showed huge improvements to his He's game. He's down a weight level, Blake, and the guy that no one knew a year ago has got the belt around <laughs> his waist. Like... All right. Well, here's all right. So here's the game. I, I don't think it's about disrespect. I think it's people having opinions 
based on what we have seen so far. Yeah, I think that's all it is. So I don't think it's disrespected. I think a lot of fighters talk about being disrespected, and I don't think it is that. I think it's a case of, given what we've seen so far, your skill set versus this person's skill set, I believe this person would win. So let's play a little game here. Jamal versus Yuri Prohaska happens in two months' time. Who wins? Let's say Yuri's shoulder is back completely healthily. Who are you picking, Jamal or Yuri? I'm going to have to push you for an answer. I I, I, I really feel like I need to find a friend. Uh, I... uh... I could this see is supposed it, to be quick fire. Go I on. could see it potentially being uh, a five round war. Uh, and, and I don't I think... want your life story, Stu. Who's winning? All right, you, who are you fuck picking? Sake, Yuri. Yuri. All right, all right. They book Jamal versus Ankalaev for two months' time. Who's winning? Uh, uh, mm. no, who's winning? Ankalaev. Who do you think's winning? Ankalaev. Um, who else was in the mix? Well, well, yeah, uh, well, just quickly, your your two choices on the question you just asked. I would probably pick the same. That's right, why I okay. don't think it's this. I don't think it's disrespectful. Yeah, I think it's just like Jamal Hill beats but, Jan Blahovic. I think Jamal Hill probably beats Jan Blahovic. Um, I all right, I Anthony was, Smith. Oh, oh, no, no, no. All right, all right. No, this is a good one. I think Jamal Hill beats Anthony Smith as well. Yeah. Um, Jamal Hill. Versus Alex Pereira. I knew that one was coming. Uh, I think Jamal Hill. I think Jamal Hill wins that. Um, and the reason being, I think he he's obviously he fights at that weight. Uh, I think he hits harder than Izzy. And we've seen when Izzy connects with Pereira, it's damage. He doesn't move as quickly as uh, as Izzy, obviously. Uh, but I, I think I think Jamal Hill wins that fight. I would pick Pereira. Mm. So again, I don't mean I don't hope no one thinks of being disrespectful in that kind of way. I think Pereira is a light heavyweight. Yeah. He just does some crazy shit to cut down to middleweight. You've yeah. seen the size of him, mate. If you uh, want to hate he's... on his full name, former guest of the show, <laughs> Jamal Hill, that's fine, mate. <laughs> There's no hate. It's just your opinion based on what you said. I've not seen Jamal implement offensive grappling. I thought he showed such amazing improvements in his defensive grappling against Glover. Mm. I was so impressed. I didn't think he had that level in his locker yet. Yeah. And he showed it. And I was really impressed by that. And I think a lot of people were surprised by the fact that Glover was on top of him a couple of times and he was able to get out of it or get rid of those takedowns and all that stuff. Um, but I've he's not gonna seen come and avenge. He's going to come and avenge Grandad Glover, isn't he? <laughs> but that's the storyline, and it's yeah, a fun storyline. So if, if if Pereira beats Adesanya twice, he could defend the belt again, and I think it makes sense to keep defending the belt while you can. But I mean, if he beat Adesanya, I'm just very aware of all this crazy light going on on my face over here. Um, but if you the if Pereira beats Adesanya twice, and then say he did fight Whitaker at the end of the year and beat him. I think you'd go straight up and just fight up there. And again, and if a striker is holding the belt like Jamal Hill, Jamal will be probably a heavier puncher than Izzy for sure. Right, question. Great. But the technical ability of Pereira probably is better than Jamal. So it sounds bad. It sounds like you are being disrespectful, but I'm not. I just feel like that is the way it could go. So it's not about disrespect. I just feel like that that's the reality of what we're living in at the moment. But go on, what are you going to say? Uh, Easy wins the rematch. Okay. Yep. Uh, so Pereira, does he still go up? And if he does, what's waiting for him? Because he's not, if he loses, he's not going to go up and get the title shot straight away. Uh, probably no, probably not. No, I think he needs to be champion to get the belt straight away. Oh, it's so tricky because again, if he loses, do you think like he'll still it... go up? Yeah, I think so. Well, no, actually, no, they could, they could do a trilogy, couldn't they? And there's loads of money in that. So I think if he loses, I think he sticks around and they do a trilogy at the end of the year. That's what you do. Because that's the best business. That's the best money. That's the best business. Um, that's what I think he should do. And then, yeah. But say he lost twice to Izzy and then he goes up. The the landscape of the light heavyweight division can change a lot. 
I think I don't know, but him fighting the strikers up at light heavyweight will be fun. Mm. Like I think he'd beat a Jan Blahovic. Mm-hmm. I think he'd have a really fun fight with Yuri Prohashka or yeah. Johnny Walker um, or Jamal Hill. Mm. I think they'd be great fights. But then when you start putting him against someone that can grapple quite well, even if it's someone like an Anthony Smith or um, definitely a Magomed Ankalaev, people like that, that's when I start going, oh, I, I wonder if you'll struggle. Because I, I think middleweights that can grapple well could do well against Pereira. Yeah. They've just got to avoid that power. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But I don't know. It's all fun. fun Bobby chats. Beckles will be um, the champ at the end of the year. Oh, God. Um, it's just not, <laughs> I mean, that that and poor... Please, please, please go and listen to our uh, predictions for who will be champion. I mean, most of it's out of the fucking window already, isn't it? <laughs> well, some of it is, yeah. Um, but uh, but we had a really fun chat about who we think will be champs by the end of the year. And we'd love to know your picks as well. That was a few weeks ago if you haven't heard it. Um, but it's always a good, a good fun listen, that because uh because you can play along, predict who you think is gonna be champs, and, and you can remind me and Stu where we've fucked up and we're not even out of January yet, and we've fucked Absolutely. up already <laughs> on some bits. Now look, I think we could possibly call it here i don't think we've had any messages from our potential we guest. haven't we haven't i've just checked um i just want to shout out um uh, the anthony yard uh fight of the weekend uh in boxing i know uh, this is an mma podcast but anybody that loves a good a good scrap go if you've not watched that fight already go and watch that fight it's one of the best fights i've seen in years um i know that you also made a note here um luke rockhold uh is, yes he's uh, obviously, he's been released by the UFC, and he's, he's been released. He's talking. He's, he's talking. The pools. He's coming. He? He, he, he's he. Well, he he retired, didn't he? And as mm. with most MMA retirements, they don't last very long. Um, he retired, but then he wants to fight. But the UFC, I think he's convinced the UFC to release him. I think he said he doesn't want to fight in the UFC. He wants to go and do his other thing. So whether that's boxing, he's mentioned Jake Pauls. He might be chasing that. That money, that bag of money with with Jake Paul, I definitely don't want to see that because I'm pretty sure Jake Paul's got a left hook in him, and and Luke Rockhold can't defend left hooks. Is it Jake Paul um, that's fighting Tommy, Tommy Fury? Fury? Right. Yes. Yeah. Um. I I don't know anything about Tommy Fury, so I don't know how that fight will go. Um. But yeah, I just I my thing is I felt like Luke Rockhold retired in kind of a fun way. Like mm. he retired in that fight against Costa, which albeit he lost, but he lost in a way where we were all actually sort of cheering for him. And <sighs> I know it was a bit gross, but he was like doing that thing of like rubbing the, the blood onto, yeah. onto Paolo Costa and telling him to F off and <laughs> all this stuff. And both of them looked tired. Like, to be fair, I don't think Paolo Costa came out of it too well because you're fighting Luke Rockhold who hadn't fought in ages yeah. and has had troubles in the latter end of his career. Um and uh, and you were struggling there with this new uh, guy in front of you that uh, that that was exhausted pretty quickly. Um, but I just thought he went out in this really kind of like fun, kind of like tough way where he was like, I know I've not got it anymore or I know my gas tank's just gone because I haven't fought for years, but I'm going to go down like kicking and screaming and say an F you and just go that. And I thought it was kind of a fun retirement. And Luke Rockhold's been one of these guys that for a long time, fans haven't liked him very much. He's got this kind of like good looking sort of arrogant kind of way about him. And I feel like that's one of the big reasons that Michael Bisping became the champ, because I don't think Luke Rockhold was taking him seriously at all. Um, and I think a lot of fans didn't like that about him. And I kind of think this fight against a guy that fans also had problems with in, in Paolo Costa he sort of went out a bit of a, a sort of a hero, not quite a hero, but sort of a hero. And I, I think it'd be a shame for him to come back. I, I I don't see what he does in the PFL. Maybe there's fights from him in Bellator. I don't know. I, I have no interest in watching him box against anyone really, especially Jake Paul. Um, so yeah, I just don't, I just don't know what's really there for him. I kind of feel like retiring was the best, was the best thing for him. And, and that's obviously not, not continued so yeah we'll have to see yeah i'm not not interested in watching him fight in anything uh whatsoever uh i think 
I didn't enjoy the Costa fight much. Uh, I didn't think no, I thought it was quite funny. <laughs> I, I, I didn't. I, I, just, I just, I'm, I'm one of them people that I didn't particularly like him. Um, his question mark kick is the best fucking kick in the business. Oh my god, oh, isn't it mile. amazing? Like, if you haven't seen Luke Rock hold on, I'm assuming it's his Instagram or whatever, yeah. chucking question mark kicks at this dummy. Oh my god, it's yeah. so scary and so technically beautiful. Yeah. It is amazing. And he was always great on the ground as well. Like yeah. he had a great kind of top game, like good grappling from top position mm. and, and good ground and pound and stuff. He was a great fighter. I think he he probably should have done more with his run than he did. Yeah. But obviously I I don't think he took Bisping seriously, and that's what led to problems there yeah i, I just I, I just never got that excited watching him fight I, I, I obviously he was the champ and you got to respect him for that but yeah that fight against costa i didn't think was anything particularly special and i think when he retired i was like that makes sense like you know you what's left for you to do i mean it's easy for any former ufc fighter to go Jake Paul, give me Jake Paul, give me Logan Paul, because mm. it's money. It is money, and mm. I understand these people are prize fighters, so of course they're gonna they're gonna put their neck on the line to to make money. Um, and and absolutely, I'm not I'm not questioning that. Would I watch it? Nah, just not interested. Not interested. If he went to PFL, if he went to Bellator, would I be super excited to see his name on a fight card? Not especially, like uh, because I don't think he beats. The, the top fives in a lot of them organisations at the moment, you know, certainly, certainly Bellator. Um, yeah, not not massively interested in seeing Luke uh, Luke Rockhold fight, but that's just me. Yeah, no, I, I think that's absolutely fair enough, and I think we're kind of we're done. We are. Hopefully, we'll hopefully we'll be coming to you with a uh, a nice little interview with with one of our favourite fighters uh, in a couple of days. We'll find out what's what's gone on there but um i'm sure they've got a very valid reason for for not absolutely it. absolutely um, and we've mentioned some fighters on today's show we've mentioned in gary we've mentioned paddy the baddie pimlet we've mentioned jamal hill these have all been guests on the podcast um, among so many others you know legends like dan hardy you just mentioned michael bispin had a wonderful chat with michael bispin the yeah. guy that's generally in the octagon with most of these guys he's mark goddard we had a wonderful chat with with Mark, a real peek behind the curtain of like what what happens when you're the third guy in the in the cage. We've had absolute world champions. We've mentioned Volk on this episode. We had a great chat with Alexander Volkanovsky. Who else we had on, Blake? Tyron Woodley, Molly McCann, uh, Nathaniel Wood, Lerone Murphy, Jai Herbert, uh, guys in cage warriors like uh, uh, Paul Hughes, Jordan Buchenic, Matt Bonner. Uh, the Hardwick uh, Nathan brothers, Nathan Fletcher, the Hardwick brothers, uh, George Hardwick, obviously the lightweight champ at the moment over in Cage Warriors. So just yeah, we announced he's uh, got his defense uh, coming up. There's a defense just been announced for for George. And, there you uh, go. Love to see him get that and see him at some point in the UFC. It'd be amazing to see yeah. George. Also, yeah, great. Ricky Simone, Corey Sandhagen, some ranked uh, uh, bantamweights there. Yeah, we've we've had them all on. Derek Brunson. We've we've had loads and loads of top, 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 top fighters on this show uh and hopefully we'll we'll get a few more on for you very soon but uh but one of the things you, you can also do as well we talk about this uh not as much as we should but you can watch all of these shows if you're listening to your podcast but you actually for some reason want to see our, our daft faces um if you prefer you you know to watch your podcast you can go and watch us uh chat we've got a youtube channel just search mma fan podcast and subscribe over there and uh, and you can watch these matters um and yeah, other than that, give us a little like, love, share on the socials. We're on all the uh, the usual platforms. We're not on TikTok yet, are we? Because we're not we're not down with the kids, well, are we? We 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 tried to get onto TikTok, and we put up one of the oh, videos God, that we yeah. put up on like Instagram and all this other stuff. And it said that we violated their um, I don't know their code of conduct or, or something. And I'm like, I've like we put that stuff on Instagram on Twitter. No. We're not saying anything bad or offensive or uh, I, I don't, don't really know. understand I think it was literally just like who should Jamal or, or someone fight yeah. next and it probably uh, for some didn't reason help that, that we had our shirts off that's true so go and yeah. check that yeah that we did yeah we had our shirts off I mean if and that's not a reason you. to go over to YouTube yeah <laughs> Stu was lathering jam all over himself you know it was uh you can get more of that kind of stuff on my OnlyFans by the way yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> right, we're done. <laughs> He's going we're with done. It. On that right. note. We'll be back next right. time. See you soon. Bye, guys. Thank you.